Hey everybody, welcome back to the Principal Outdoors YouTube channel. Uh, today we're going to do something a little different because I can't be always talking about uh, Hummingbird Electronics and Minn Kota Motors and all that stuff. There's only so much we can, we can do with that. Um, I will be doing some videos on that on the water as soon as I can get up to the cottage. Uh, so we'll have that for you a little later in the, in the late spring, summer. Uh, so what I thought I would do is do a multi-part series on the basics of bass fishing for beginners. I think there's a lot of people getting into fishing or getting back into fishing, uh, with, with the pandemic that went on. Uh, I know a lot of people are getting back into fishing. So I assume there's a lot of people that, um, are looking for some help on, on how to, how to catch more fish. I fell in love with bass fishing when I was four years old. Caught my first bass at, I think it was that age. I don't even remember it. My dad used to tell me stories about it. Um, I don't remember it at all. I remember my second bass. Um, and uh, it, that, was, that was quite an experience. Caught it on a black hair jig. I had no clue what I was doing, but uh, managed to catch a bass on that, right? So um, I, from there, I started doing tournaments and stuff like that and uh, went through the whole gamut. And now I'm back to the stage where... I fish for fun. When I'm on vacation, I fish for fun. I spend uh, every day of my vacation week on the boat for a couple hours fishing. You know, if it's raining, I come in now. And if it's super nice and the fish are biting, I stay out. Kind of take a more relaxed approach now as opposed to when I used to do tournaments, you know. And I think there's a lot of videos out there with all those guys, with all the patches on their, you know, all those, those, those uh, pro guys, you know. Uh, with all the patches on their sponsors and all that on their shirts and uh, I, we really need those guys I love those guys and we need those guys because they're the ones that make it exciting for the youngsters getting into fishing it's the same thing as NASCAR guys uh, we need all those pro anglers and stuff um, but th they're always talking about the the newest techniques and the and the most sophisticated techniques which is not necessarily for the beginner. So I'm going to try to address really just for beginners from the start on, on how to get into bass fishing. I think bass fishing is the best. The, the, the bass are easily found right across uh, North America, uh, everywhere in every town, you know, smallmouth, largemouth, pretty much everywhere. They're a very robust fish, so you can catch them multiple times uh, and, and release them back in the water. And, um, you know, they'll be there to fight another day. So they're, uh, they're fun to catch. Uh, they're strong, they fight, they jump, and apparently they taste good. So if you feel like, you know, eating a couple of bass every once in a while, I have nothing against that either. Um, sometimes there's certain lakes out there that need it. They got too many small bass in them. So you've got to call a few of them. So nothing wrong with that. So whatever it is you want to do, uh, as far as bass fishing goes, I just want to make it a bit easier for you. So today we're going to start with rods, reels and line because that's the most important thing future you know part two is going to be some lures and techniques uh and then eventually we'll get to on the water and and the basics of using your electronics on the water but for the first episode let's just start talk, talk about rods and reels okay so there's two basic kinds of of setups for bass fishing there's bait casters so a bait caster is this so a low profile reel and the reels on the top of the rod and you hold it like that very, very comfortable. So that's a bait caster. The other kind is a spinning rod and reel. Now, this one's we're more used to, right? So that's a spinning, you know, reel hangs down low, uh, handles like that, um, very comfortable in the hands as well. So what's the difference between the two? Basically, spinning is for lighter line and bait casting is for a heavier line. And why you would use a lighter line or a heavier line? Well, that depends where you're fishing. If you're fishing in logs and heavy rocks and stuff like that, you're going to need a heavier line and you're going to want a rod with a little more backbone. So that would be a bait caster. If you're out fishing in the open water or you're drop shotting and you use, you need to use light line, um, then you would go with a spinning reel, a uh, spinning rod, spinning reel. Okay. So that's the main difference be the, between the two. Now things can kind of get complicated when you start getting into braided lines and, uh, non-braided lines like fluorocarbons uh, because you can actually put 20 pound test on this if it was braided right but you couldn't put 20 pound test on here if it was fluorocarbon or monofilament it just wouldn't work it's too wiry to be on the spool right so those are the main differences um, let's talk with the about the rods first so Rods, there's so many different lengths and there's so many specific techniques. You can buy a rod specifically for drop shotting now. You can buy one specifically for spy baiting, specifically for uh, 
uh, bladed jigs, you know, specifically for flipping. You can buy all kinds of specific rods, but I don't want you to get too caught up in all that because you don't need a rod for every application. You know, it's nice to have 24 rods in the boat. Uh, it, it's very convenient sometimes, as long as you don't step on them, which I have done. Um, it's nice to have that many, but you don't need that many, right? So, so what do you look for when you're getting a rod, right? First of all, let's talk about length. Just buy seven foot rods. That's all you got to do. It's really that simple. Maybe six, uh, six, uh, ten, maybe seven foot two, but right around seven feet. Whether it's a spinning rod or it's a bait cast rod, just go with seven foot rods. Now, if you're a younger person, uh, you know, you're a youngster beginning out, you might want to go with six and a half just because it's a little easier to, to, you know, less rod to deal with, right? But for an, ad uh, an adult, just go for seven foot rods. Makes it so much easier. Just do that then the only other thing you have to think about is action. So let's say you're gonna get two spinning rods. So you get a medium heavy action for little stronger lures or heavier lures and a medium action. That's all you need. So spinning, medium heavy and medium. Bait cast, same thing. Just get a seven foot medium action rod and a, and a seven foot medium heavy action rod for heavier stuff. And I'll, I'll explain the differences in, in a bit later, right? But that's all you got to look at when you're buying a rod. To me, that's, you know, it's my personal opinion, but that's all you need is seven foot rods and you'll be good to go. When you get a bit better, a little more experience, then you can get into maybe a seven and a half foot rod. You know, I, I started using a lot of seven and a half foot spinning rods and stuff, um, but I've been fishing for many, many years. So eventually you, you'll get to there and you'll get the really specific rods. Uh, it's funny, rods used to be five and a half feet long. Uh, you know, I still remember those pistol grip bait cast rods. The, the handle was short here and it actually had a grip on it for your, it looked like a pistol grip, that's why they're called that. And they were five and a half feet long, all of them. Um, but nobody uses rods like that. So the rods have evolved in the years and pretty much seven foot is a good standard. It's a great place to begin with, right? Um, reels for those rods. So let's look at bait casting reels. So a little later on at the end of the video i'm going to show you how to cast both of these so don't don't worry about that just get to the end and you'll see um how to actually cast i'll take it outside and i'll do a couple of casts and show you how they work and a couple of tricks to make it easier right so bait casting reels can be a little tricky now um in a tricky in the sense that uh if you if you go for a 40 dollars bait casting reel you're gonna have trouble bait cast reels you have to learn how to cast them uh so you do I do suggest you go for a little better quality. Now, if you spend 150 bucks on a bait casting reel, you're good to go. Trust me. I, I've been using, I'm not sponsored by any rod and reel company, but I will say I use Shimano rods and reels. Um, one of the few companies that are actually uh, have technology coming out of Japan, right? So really, really good reels. But pretty much any brand, spend 150 bucks on a bait cast reel and you're going to be good to go. Don't, don't worry about size, just get the regular size and you'll be able to put from 12 pound test up to 25 pound test on that reel. So don't, don't worry about that. So look for a bait cast reel, about 150 bucks. As long as what, as far as what handle to reel on, now that I can't really help you with. Uh, if you feel more comfortable reeling with your left hand, that's fine. You feel more comfortable reeling with your right hand, that's fine. Both are available. Uh, if you can, if you're not sure, try to bore one or at the store, ask them if you could step outside and try one. Uh, they'll let you try a left hand and a right hand. They should have a rod or reel spooled up there for customers to try. Spinning rods and reels. Um, spinning reel, little less involved as far as casting. Again, I'll show you that a bit later. So you don't really have to go that expensive. In my mind, if you spend a hundred bucks on a spinning reel, you're going to be good to go. I wouldn't spend 50 bucks on a reel, a spinning reel, again, for even on a spinning reel. Something's going to break at that price eventually. So, you know, my first reel cost me, the first one I ever bought in a store, a Baycaster cost me, I think, 90 bucks. It still works. It's 100 bucks or whatever. It still works. I've got $100, $150 Baycast reels and spinning reels that still work to this day. A little bit of upkeep, nothing much, and they still work. So spinning reels, the good thing is you can almost always switch to handle to left and right. So that's not really an issue. Um, so so yeah, that just look for an average size. So like in a Shimano, it would be a 2,500 size or 3,000 size. That's that size right there. And uh, on that, you can put from six pound test all the way up to 10 pound test uh, in, in mono or fluorocarbon. 
Uh, in braid, you can go from from five pound test braid all the way up to 20 pound test braid on this. So just a medium sized spinning reel will do you good. So that kind of takes care of your combos right there. Um, it's funny, I, I like I said, I have trouble with left hand, right hand. When I was a kid, I used to fish on my dad's old Mitchell reel right here, right? So, and that was a left-handed retrieve. Back then, you couldn't switch to handles, right? So, it was a left-handed retrieve, right? And one day, I was lucky enough to um, go by a, a garage sale, and somebody was selling a reel, just like my dad's, for $2.50, right? But it was a Mitchell 301, which meant the handle was on the other side. Um, so, I kind of got messed up. I could fish left and right. I could, I'm ambidextrous when it comes to fishing. Nothing else but fishing. So, I, I kind of, at a young age, I got started on left and right, right? So, um, and if you listen, listen how loud those reels were back then. <laughs> so, this is a reel from the 70s. Man, they were loud. So, that covers rod and reels right there. Um, again, I'm just to recap, you know, seven foot rods, medium, medium heavy. You can cover just about every technique I'm going to talk about uh, on that. Um, and reels, again, bait cast reels spend about 150 bucks. Uh, spinning reel about a hundred bucks and you're good to go. I do suggest if you can, you know, start off with four combos or maybe two spinning reels, uh, spinning rod reel combos and one bait cast rod and reel combo. Maybe start with that uh, and, uh, and, and, and go from there. And, you know, again, if you, if you, if you don't cheap out when you buy your first rod and reel, um, you'll have them forever. So you can add to your, your arsenal, um, so it's kind of, I've always heard the analogy that it's like golf. You never see somebody playing golf with one club, right? Uh, they've always got a number, number of irons and a number of woods. So fishing can be the same way. And that's why you see guys with 24 rods on their deck. Um, but, you know, so you can slowly build up to that. It's super nice. You know, when you want to change technique, you don't have to retie. You just grab a, grab a different rod that's on your deck, right? So put a little bit of money in your first ones um, and, uh, and they'll, they'll stay with you. As far as rods go, I should talk about this as well. As far as, you know, what to spend for rods, you know what to look for, seven foot, a medium or a medium heavy. Um, and, and probably I'd say around a hundred bucks for a rod would be good too. Um, you know, bass fishing, yes, it's nice. There are, I've used thousand dollar rods and they're super nice. You can feel everything. You can feel a fish uh, breathing near the lure pretty much. It seems like it sometimes. Um, I thought I heard a fish. I thought I felt, I had a rod that was so nice once. I thought I heard a fish fart at the other end of the lake. I thought I felt it in the rod, but I'm not hundred percent sure. Um, but it may or may not happen. So anyways, about a hundred bucks for a rod, whether it's a bait cast or a spinning rod, uh, that'll do you pretty good to start. So, uh, yeah, we're talking about 200 to $250 combos here, but I, I think it's worth it. I, I wouldn't waste your money on cheaper stuff. And again, I'm not associated with any rod and reel company. So, um, I'm not trying to push any brands or anything. So that's rods and reels. Uh, if you have any questions, put them down in the, uh, comments and, uh, let's talk about line now. So line, there's three different types of line. Okay. The most common type of line is just regular monofilament. So that's what we've used for years and years and years, right? It's very good, very tough. You know, even this, uh, Trilene, uh, and I'm not sponsored by Trilene, but, um, this is six pound test. I've used this. This is super, super tough, right? So mono is a great all around line, nice and soft, very easy to use. Um, the only one thing about it is it's not invisible in the water. So when people wanted to get better lines that were invisible, they went to fluorocarbon line. So this is a fluorocarbon line right here. Trilene, hundred percent fluorocarbon. I've been using this since fluorocarbon came out. I love it but there is a whole bunch of other good fluorocarbons. Fluorocarbon line is not cheap. So when you buy it, it's usually a good line, no matter what brand you get, right? So this, the difference between this and mono is it's invisible in the water. So the fish really can't see it. So that's one advantage. Uh, the one downside sometimes, and sometimes it's actually a plus side is fluorocarbon actually sinks, whereas mono will float. So as an example, if I'm fishing top waters, I will not use fluorocarbon because it sinks and it's, it kind of changes the action of the top water by pulling it down in the water. I'll always use monofilament if I'm fishing top waters, but I'll use like a 17 pound test, right? So that's one of the difference. I use monofilament less and less, um, but it's a great affordable way to get started. Even better than both of those, especially for the beginner, is braided line. So 
Braided line is actually, if I'm not mistaken, um, the gentleman from PowerPro once said that braided line was developed for flying kites and somehow migrated over to the fishing uh, area, you know, probably, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago, maybe. So it's, it's non-stretch line braided. So this, this is about, you know, here, I'll show you. This is like... You won't be able to see it, but I'll just explain it. This is six pound test mono, right? And this is 50 or 65, 65 pound test braid. And they're almost the same diameter. So braid is super strong for the diameter that you have, right? And it doesn't stretch at all. So braid is for when you're in really heavy, heavy cover, you go up and you use a 50 pound or a 65 pound. I actually never use 65, 50 is as big as I go. But braid is good for that. The other advantage of braid is it's super tough and super resistant. So I kind of recommend for your first rods and reels, buy braid. Because number one, it's going to last really long for you. you. It'll easily last a whole season. You don't have to worry about re-spooling. Number two, uh, you're going to learn, because it doesn't stretch, you can feel every fish that's biting. It's very easy to feel fish. So great way to start to develop your your sense of touch and your sense of feel as far as knowing when a fish is biting right um so two uh, the sense of feel um and, and um the other thing too is on a bait caster i'm gonna again i'm gonna show you how to cast a bait caster but with braided line the danger with bait ca with a bait caster is you can get a bird's nest which means if you don't control the cast the line's gonna poof, explode on the rod on the reel and make a big tangle right with braided line, that's much less likely to happen. So again, I always suggest that you start with braided line. Um, so those are the three main lines. Uh, mono, very tough enough, affordable, uh, but it stretches and uh, fish can see it. Fluorocarbon, next step up, stretches less, but does stretch a bit, but a lot less than mono and is invisible in the water. Um, and then braided line, uh, no stretch, super tough, uh, lasts very, very long. So those are your three lines. Just to, just to show where I use what, um, as an example, drop shot fishing. So I'll talk about that, but that's vertical fishing and fishing real slow. And you'll use light line for spooky fish. So you want to make sure they can't see the line. So then I'll use eight or 10 pound braid, maybe, or sorry, eight or 10 pound fluorocarbon, uh, occasionally six pound fluorocarbon. Because uh, you're fishing very slow and you don't want them to see the line. The whole other end of the spectrum, fishing a frog in weeds, uh, you know, heavy, heavy weeds, heavy cus cover like that. Then I'm going with 50 pound braid because when that fish pulls the frog into the weeds, I want to be able to force him back out of the weeds, right? So that's a quick look at rod, reels, and lines. Stay tuned. I'm going to go right into showing you how to cast the rods and reels. Um, there's one thing I just want to touch on too. When it comes to fishing and bass fishing as well, a lot of beginners think, or, or it, it, it's, it, it, they enjoy the fight. So you want, they, they, uh, they're under the impression that it's cool or it's good to use very light line and to fight the fish for a long time. Cause that's really what we're doing it for is, is for that pull on the other end of the line. True, it's great fighting the fish and everything, but Fighting a fish for too long is really bad for the fish. If you use four pound test and you're fighting that fish for like five minutes, you are actually gonna kill that fish. There's a very good chance that you will kill that fish, that you will release it and it will die later because it's fought to exhaustion, right? So keep that in mind. It's really about, for me, and I won't speak for everybody, for me, bass fishing is about finding that fish, about catching that, getting him to bite and fighting him. So I just go, the reason why I do it is to feel that tick on my line. That tick, when they suck it in, um, that the world ends, the world stops, everything that stops that's going on in the world, and it's just me and that fish. That's why I bass fish. That's why I've always bass fish. That's what it's all about for me. So after that, getting the hooks at him, getting him into the boat, that's just second, second, you know, that's not about it. I don't really care too much about fighting the fish too long. I enjoy it. Don't get me wrong. I enjoy it, but I'm not going to spend five minutes fighting a fish. You know, the other thing is if you do that, you have a chance of breaking your line. Now the fish has a lure in his mouth and everything. So don't really think about, you know, that. Think about finding the fish. Every day, challenge yourself when you go out to catch more fish. 
that's what the goal should be, not to have a five-minute fight with a fish. It should always be that, you know, try to beat your personal best. Like, keep track of the fish you catch. Scales, you can get a scale now for a very precise scale for very, very little money now. So keep track of your fish. Try to get a bigger fish every time you go out. Try to get more fish every time you go out. That's what it's really all about for me. Uh, so give it a shot. Um, take a look. If you have any questions, put them in the comments down there. If there's anything you want to talk to about, about the basics you want me to cover, the basics of bat fish, bass fishing, put it in the comments. I'll do it. And uh, now let's take a look on how to cast a bait caster and how to cast a spinning rod. All right, so let's take a look at casting right now. So let's start off with the spinning rod and reel right here. Um, before we go, or before I get started, I just want to say one thing I forgot to mention before. I always buy one-piece rods. They, they do make two-piece rods. Initially, you might think, oh, they're easier to travel and stuff. You will end up with one-piece rods. Uh, so just you might as well just start with one-piece rods. I was told that 20 years ago, and I didn't believe it. It's true. I only use one-piece rods now. So. Um, so this is a spinning rod and reel. Very, very easy to use. Uh, the, the line comes, bring your line right closest to the, to the rod like that. Just grab your line like that. And then this is the bail right here. You open the bail while you hold the line. That's it. You bring the rod back and you throw it forward and let go of the line. When you, As soon as you start throwing it forward, you let go of the line. It might take you about three casts to get used to it, but it's, it's pretty easy. I'll show you that one again. Let's reel it in. Always leave about a foot, six inches from your lure to the tip of the rod. Again, bring the reel over to heel here so the line is closest to the rod. Grab the line and open the bale. Now you can take your time. You're holding the line. Uh, in, unless you let go, you're good to go. Bring the rod back, shoot it forward, and uh, let go of the line as you're shooting forward. It takes a bit of timing, but not that difficult. Um, just like that. There you go. As you cast, you're going to get better and better and more accurate. Keep in mind, you don't have to cast super hard. There's a limit to how far you're going to go. Um, so you don't have to whip it, you know, super hard. As far as the drag goes, we should mention that as well. Setting the drag, this knob right here, right in the front, that's your drag setting. It's pretty much the same on every reel. The way to set it is just, just pull it. And if the line's coming out, you know, you got to give it a bit of a pull and it starts going, then you're good to go. That's the difference between a cheap reel and a, and, a, and a good reel. A lot of it has to do with the drag. Don't get caught up in ball bearings. Just buy a good brand name. But yeah, that's the drag. Just set it to where if you pull it, it's coming out not too easy, not too hard. If you have a fish on, you may have to adjust it, and that's fine. Just give it a little tighten, a little loosen, whatever you have to do. So uh, that's casting with the spinning rod and reel. Let's look at a bait caster right here. So bait caster, like I said, is a little more complicated. Um, the way to let the line out is to push down on this right here. So if I push on it, the line starts going out. So it's all about controlling that spool. So there's two ways to do it. Number one, they have a cast control knob right here. This puts tension on the spool when you un it disengage the spool, right? So if I put that really, really tight and I disengage the spool, it doesn't move. See, it's not going anywhere. But if I loosen that, it starts moving, okay? Now, one of the best ways to set it up is bring it up a bit, disengage, and loosen it till it goes down, but stops on its own. That's a very good way to set it up. Later on, you may want to get it looser um, and be able to cast a bit further, but to start, that's the best way. So just disengage it and tighten this so that where when, the, when your lure hits the, the bottom, hits the ground, it stops spinning on its own. So now we get to casting. A couple of things with bait casting. Very important. Best tip I ever had, always cast sidearm. Always sidearm. Until you get really, really good. But even then, a lot of people still cast sidearm. So push down on the button and hold the spool at the same time. So you're pushing on that button, holding the spool. Same thing now, like spinning. You bring the rod back, and as you go forward, you let go of the spool. The difference is now you're going to keep your finger on the spool to control it. So just let it go and keep your thumb on the spool. And what you want to do is when that lure hits the water, you stop. You break the spool with your thumb. Okay? So that's what takes a bit of practice. It seems really hard at first. Two things. Cast sidearm always. And always uh, cast 
softly in the sense that don't whip it. As soon as you try to rip it, and trust me, this happens to guys that have been fishing for years, happens to me all the time. I'm fishing and then I just cast and I see a fish jump in the other direction. So I reel it in as fast as I can and I rip it down the other way and I rip it too hard and the spool just go <laughs> blows up with line and I have a super big tangle. So it'll happen to everybody. Don't get freaked out about it. Um, so again, push down on, on the, the thumb bar right there and hold the spool, okay? slowly sidearm like this and then let it go and keep your thumb on the spool and stop the spool when your lure hits the ground okay that's that's it's gonna take practice you're not gonna get it right away but you will get it trust me it takes practice now here's the best tip i ever had and this tip i will give credit to bob azumi from bob azumi's real fishing show when i started fishing uh i was a huge fan of his and i used to watch his show all the time and he said the best way to learn bait casting is this. Do exactly like I said, break it. Now, when your cast is out there, okay, before you reel in and you're practicing in on your yard, in your backyard or whatever, take a piece of electrical tape about that big, okay, and put it on the spool and reel it onto the spool, okay, and reel your line over on top of it, okay. Reel it all the way in, reel it all the way in. Now, if you make a mistake and you get, a, you, you know, you, you just... You fudge your cast or whatever the line is going to stop from the, that tape is going to stop from your line exploding on the reel it's called a backlash it's going to prevent you from getting a backlash do that trust me again i'm going to thank bob azumi i was so lucky that uh he was a big hero of mine and uh years later like i don't know 10 years later i got to fish against him got to know him and uh he's still you know one of the only tv people uh, that I really enjoy watching. So hats off to Bob Azumi, the man. Um, but yeah, I, I used to fish against him and everything. And uh, he used to ask me about where I was fishing and he would he would um, get all the information out of me. Only when I did well, which was once, but <laughs> anyways. So that's it, that's bait casting right there. So one more time, we'll do it. Push down on the thumb bar, hold the spool, hold it. Try to keep your hand relatively relaxed, right? Pull the rod back, let go of the spool, and then just keep your thumb on the spool. Control the speed of the spool like that. And you're good to go. All right, so I hope that helps you out. I hope uh, I hope you start bass fishing. I hope you get into casting. Uh, I hope you learn how to use a bait caster and use a spin caster. Um, next video, we're going to talk about the different, uh, you know, wh where you use a bait caster, where you use a spinning. We're going to start talking about techniques and stuff like that, the basic techniques and explain a lot more in depth on how bass fishing works and all that stuff. So uh, I'm hoping this is going to be about a six, seven, eight part series and uh, I'll keep doing the videos as fast as I can. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And um, give us a subscribe if you can. Give us a like. I'm almost at a thousand subscribers or halfway there, I'd say. Um, so keep going. I appreciate it. Keep watching. Thank you. <laughs>